a robotic revolution began in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A new vision for the future, where humans interact with intelligent technologies, was born at Carnegie Mellon. Thanks to some of the most brilliant minds in the fields of artificial intelligence and computer science, and a unique collaborative environment, the Robotics Institute was founded in 1979. It's a good rule in science that when a new field opens up, uh, you better be there firstest with the mostest. Sitting at the intersection of mobility and artificial intelligence, the Institute played to the traditional and emerging strengths of Carnegie Mellon to create an organization unlike any other. What followed was an explosion of scientific expansion and exploration that continues to propel the discipline of robotics further and faster today. On the crest of this wave were Carnegie Mellon's Raj Reddy and Angel Jordan, and Tom Murren, formerly of Westinghouse. So in uh, 78, we, you know, Dick Syed, who was the president of the university, you know, had a meeting which with Alan Newell and me and, uh, and uh, who else? Uh, Bill Wolf and uh, Angel Jordan, I think. Uh, so to say, gee, how come we're not doing anything in robotics? Don Murren, who was a, another visionary at Westinghouse, uh, who had just yeah, created a program at Westinghouse, a center which was the quality center. And it was to respond to the Japanese threat in manufacturing. Uh, the Japanese were recovering from World War II. And it was becoming increasingly clear that they not only wanted to restore their competitive capabilities, they would like to be preeminent in many fields. This area, how would we get started and going? And we said, you know, at least a million dollars a year. At the end of the day, when Raj uh, invited me into his office, uh, because he, as he always is, he very candidly asked, uh, what did you think? And I said to him, perhaps somewhat tastelessly, I said, you are either one of the most extraordinary minds that I've ever been privileged to meet, or you're a world-class charlatan. And I keep saying to me, everybody, even today, that's the only $5 million I got without having to write a proposal. <laughs> it was purely a handshake. You know. Now, to make things even more interesting, there was another person who also was a key person in the foundation of the Institute, was Admiral Bachoco, who was the head of the Office of Naval Research. Another driving force was to build machines to keep humans out of dangerous environments. Field robots are the machines that work outside the factory in construction, agriculture, and mining. The Robotics Institute has grown in scope and focus to encapsulate machines and software with the ability to sense, think, and act. These creations reflect the collaborations between students, faculty, and mentors. This is a special place with very special people, and that inspires the energy and dedication that has made the Robotics Institute the world leader it is today. Robots do not need to look like robots. It can be embedded in the environment. Well, when you get close to a door, it opens for you. So, in a cold day, you're just waiting inside for a taxi to come, and you want to see if it's here. And then when you get close to the door, it opens, and you don't like it. The door does not understand you, that's why. I'm particularly interested in putting a more human face on technology. I'm often asked by people, you know, when we're going to have uh, robot butlers and children in particular are interested in when they're going to have robots that can do their chores for them, make their beds and such. I don't tell them, but uh, I think it's going to be their grandchildren that are going to be enjoying the fruits of those labors. Robotic systems for regenerative medicine. Distant, distant future, scientists are going to work out ways for the body to regenerate itself. In the time being, we can take steps towards uh, making that happen. Artificial senses of taste and smell will be better than the human senses, the comparable human senses. Snake robots, formerly called hyper-redundant mechanisms, 
I see these robots will be used in urban search and rescue scenarios where these tools will extend the reach of rescue workers getting to victims more quickly. Self-replicating factories on the surface of the moon that can produce copies of themselves using the locally available raw materials. There, is, there has been some, some work on human-robot interaction in terms of one-to-one -one kind of interaction, but how humans can interact with and control or monitor large teams is still an area that has not been explored at all. I would say if I had to pick one thing, it would be intelligent perception. So for example, if we make a robot that drives around outdoors based on the shape of what it sees, it gets scared of a tumbleweed and stops in front of it and will happily drive into a lake. One of the revolutions to the mobile robotics uh, area will be the advent of ever more capable sensors that can penetrate vegetation, as you see on the hill, see holes, see steps, see ditches. Learn to model the environment, learn to model the opponents and respond appropriately. Change their own strategies according to how the environment responds to their choice of strategies. We need a, uh, we need a kind of unified theory, something that unifies uh, computation and motion planning and control and, and design. And people's view of robotics and what a robot is is going to change. We have a strong responsibility to keep innovating and at the same time keep our eyes open and leave the bad behind because every technology has its good side and its bad side. We need to understand that. Pittsburgh is the right place to do robots. When you think about what it takes to build an intelligent robot, it takes steel and it takes brains. We've got the heritage of the steel industry here. We've got the heritage of the invention of artificial intelligence here. You put those two together, you've got smart robots. It's much easier here than in other, uh, in other universities to break departmental walls and to put together people from civil engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, the school of business, etc. together, working with a common with a common thrust. I love working in a collaborative environment and I visited many top universities and did not like the fact that they competed so much. I think you get some things out of competition, but you accomplish so much more if you cooperate. If, if you don't have the people, then you can't do anything.